Hello, I'm Chef David and welcome to this edition of Tutorials for Chefs. If your company doesn't have a professional software package which updates your recipes with current pricing, then in this video I'll show you how to do that in Excel. You can download this free recipe template with inventory worksheet by following this link or by clicking on the link displayed in the description window below this video on YouTube. You must have Excel installed on your computer in order for it to work. So let's begin by cruising through the tabs. Down here in the bottom you'll see instructions which is what it is. Then inventory which allows you to enter all of your inventory and link recipe costing to the items listed here. We'll look at this tab in more detail shortly. Then there's the info tab where you enter your tax rate for your region, um, whether or not you want the sales tax included on your recipe sheets, your budgeted food cost, um, you enter all of that and that transfers onto the recipe sheets and then if you want to add more recipe templates you just click in here and add how many you want to add into this folder. Click create templates and it will add those. And of course you have the recipe templates themselves. The form starts just with three as you see here at the bottom and you can add more as needed. There's also a couple examples given here with some footnotes on them. So first of all, let's copy and paste a recipe to get started. And I'll grab this one from the example using control C, control V to enter. So there's my basic recipe. Um, everything that's in yellow is a space where you can add information. The cells that are in white are protected and they contain formulas as you can see up top here. You don't want to enter anything into those cells. Alright, so now we need to enter pricing and it will be price per unit. So in order to tag it into our inventory, I know that this first one, the Dungeness Crab, we actually don't have in inventory yet. So I'm going to copy that and we'll go add it into the inventory sheet and show you how this works. Go to inventory. I'm going to scroll down to cooler um, and just throw it right here. Cooler, control V. Now I've got crab meat. I'm going to price it, say, by the pound. Let's say it's uh, 18 bucks a pound. And I'm going to want it in there by the ounce. So then to start a formula, every formula in Excel starts by pressing the equals key. And then I want to take the price per pound and divide it by 16. Hit enter and it is $1.13 an ounce. So I've now I've added this item into my inventory. If I come back over to the recipe, I'm going to add another formula. So I'll hit equals. I'll click on the inventory tab and then I'll click on the cell that I want it priced from. And I want it done from the ounce. You'll see that it kind of does a little dancing ants thing there. Hit enter and it tags it over. So I've got that in there. Oh, I actually did it in there by the ounce and it should be in there by the pound. So easy to change. I'll hit equals, go back to inventory, hit my by the pound selection there. And now I've got my price in there. You'll notice over here that it has the thing saying that it's missing a value. The reason for that is I have to enter something in the yield. Um, Dungeness Crab, you should get pretty much 100% yield off the meat. If you're going to squeeze out, say, some of the juice, you could put in 98%. And what that will do is it will change your actual total cost. 
So um, we'll examine that a little bit further here in a moment. All right, so going to celery equals, go to inventory, look for celery, which I have under celery produce. Um, get that by the ounce. And celery, I'm just going to guess that I've got a 95% yield off that by the time I trim off the leaves and the core and so on. Red bell pepper equals red bell pepper ounce. Do the same with the yellow bell inventory by the ounce. Um, tarragon equals. I'm going to tag this by a tablespoon. Same on the dill. And then we have to put uh, values in here. I believe it's about 85% yield by the time you take out the core on bell peppers. Uh, I'm not sure on the tarragon what your yield's going to be by the time you take off the stem and everything. But let's just throw in 75% and say 80% on the dill. Um, and then I'm not going to bother doing the mayo because I think you get the idea. So that's how you get a recipe in here. So as we look at the top up here, it's not costing things out yet. I need to put in how many portions that I believe I'm going to get. Let's say I'll get eight at about four ounces per serving. And let's say I want to do it at $12 per uh, serving. That means my projected food cost is a 24% the ideal gross selling price over here, 721, that is taken from the info tab where we put in a budgeted food cost of 40%. If I change this to 33% and come back over, um, it is now changed to 875. So it's increased this ideal uh, selling price based upon the food cost we're trying to reach. All right, so now, Let's go over to the inventory tab. This thing is great. Um, before we start here though, let's add in some little tools up top that are going to make this job easier. We want to go to more controls, more commands, delete cells, add that, delete columns, add. We want to find insert rows not cells, insert columns, and insert rows. Click OK, and now those appear up top here, and you'll see shortly why that can be real helpful. All right, over here you've got storage area, and currently there's beverages, bread, cooler, um, sub areas in cooler, it can be dairy, produce, if you want to add another subsection in here, let's say you want cooler beef, you just type in what you want. And then if you need more rows for that, you can come up to the top, these tools we added in, insert rows. Or if you want to insert a bunch of rows, just highlight, come up, click, and it will insert a bunch of rows copy what you want to rename these uh, empty cells as far as the storage area, paste it, and now you've got a new storage space. If you don't want any of these, you there's two ways to get rid of them. You can either just delete and rename, or you can totally remove the rows by coming up to the top here and using the delete cells. Whoops, I got the wrong one. I don't want delete cells. We want delete rows. More commands. Delete cells. We'll get rid of that. And I want delete rows. There we go. So now let's remove those rows that we didn't want. If you come back to the top here also, you click here, you've got the options of sorting A to Z and other options. 
So this way if things are out of sort or you've added new items into uh, this column here, just sort A to Z and it will move everything so it's um, in its correct spot. Now for the units of measure, you've got different colored slots here so you can do multiple versions and they are all independent of each other. So for instance here on the coffee, um, this is a price per case, this is the price per bag, but down here I've got a price per bottle. If we come down here, I've got things broken down all the way to teaspoon. So every single row is independent of the next row. You don't always have to use the same, uh, the same units of measure. That makes it very flexible for you to break things down by whatever item you have purchased. Now to explain the way pricing works, put in here exactly what item you're purchasing. So this, it's chicken base and there's six per case. Case price is $29.94. I want to break it down by the pound and in this there are six one pound uh, containers. So if you look up at the top it gives you the formula. This equals this price divided by six because there are six in the case. To break it down to the ounce, I come here, you look up top, the formula shows that it is H83, which is H83 divided by 16 because there's 16 ounces in a pound. To break that into tablespoon, you can come over here and divide the uh, ounces by two. That's assuming, of course, that um, it's going to be accurate changing from a weight to a fluid uh, measure, but it's in this case it's probably pretty close. And then going to teaspoons. Alright, so to wrap this page up then, there are a number of examples in here. So totally feel free to delete everything out that you don't want, don't need add rows, rename the storage areas as you see fit, and then begin adding in all your own items. And then last update, this is so you can keep track of when you updated the price. So you would put in there 115 and it would uh, let you know when the last update was for the price. All right, that's it for this tab. Next up is renaming the tabs. So recipe template one, if you've got a hundred recipes in here, you don't want them named one, two, three, whatever. So if you right click on the tab, hit rename, type what you want, hit enter, and now your recipe tab has a name. If you want to move this, right click, click move, and it will bring up the whole list of all the tabs that you have. Um, if you want to move it over here, it'll tell you up here, move it uh, before sheet and then you pick what sheet you want to move it before or if you go way to the bottom, it'll say move to the end. You click OK and it will move that worksheet to that location. Lastly, if you want to create an index, First, you'll have to click on the tab here at the bottom, which will create a new sheet, and then rename it, which I've already done, to index. Type in your recipes. I'm going to do crab cake. Go to insert, hyperlink, and it's going to bring up a number of different things. Right now, it's showing um, the last folder that I had open you want to click on place in this document right here. That will bring up all the tabs that are on this particular document we're working on. Select crab cake, click OK, and you'll notice that we now have a, a hyperlink. And if I click on it, it brings me to the crab cake recipe. And you can do that for all your recipes within this file. 
or actually you can link it out to other files as well. Now the last thing I will show you is how to add additional blank templates into the sheet. You'll go to info, select let's say four, click create templates. Now look at the bottom here before we do this. I'll click create templates and it has added four more templates and it tells you that and it says don't forget to rename them. So if I come down to the bottom, they put them right after the info tab. So here's where we started and it added templates right here, right before the crab cake one. So it always puts them at the beginning of the sheet here and then you can just go in and rename them. So that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you on another video.